Like to. Let me say something, please. <laughs> I would like to thank the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India for inviting me to the valedictory session of uh, International Conference of CS Students 2022. My heartfelt namaskars to dignitaries who are on the stage, Sri Sushil Kumar Goyalji, Sri Dayaniva Sharmaji, Sri Sridhar Mukpalaji, Sri Chandra Babaji, Sri Uppalapati uh, Saran Kumar. My wholehearted namaskars to all the distinguished guests and people from people of eminence and caliber from the domain of chartered accountants of India. And my warm wishes to you all. And especially for skipping your lunch <laughs> to all the valedictorians here. And, and I really felt bad that you have skipped lunch. And I wholeheartedly, my pranams to you all. And you are the one who soon to become chartered accountants, auditors, finance analysts, investment bankers. And financial wizards you're gonna be in the future. And the growing economy of India, you're gonna be instrumental in it. And for you all, my wholehearted greetings and my wholehearted namaskars and my best, best greetings to you all. At the very beginning, I'm like, oh, no, it was a, I'm like, I won't prepare. I'm like, I speak from my heart. I prefer to speak from my heart, but especially from the, uh, from the Chartered Accountants of India, they gave me a specifically like, please be prepared and come. That's the reason, uh, in a kind of in a meticulous manner, I prepared myself, I made my own notes. Because I know how tough the CA is going to be, CA exams, are, uh, I know how tough they are. It's only on merit. So I truly appreciate, so that made me uh, to be more prepared, to be more precise, and uh, not to waste your time. So the theme of the conference being facing the future, Innovate, integrate, and motivate. A quote came into my mind when I was preparing for this speech from one of the eminent person of, an, uh, of the financial world, Mr. Motilal Uswal, who's a chairman and managing director of Motilal Financial Services. And his quote is, what wise men do in the beginning, fools do in the end. So, so wise man has the power to look into future and to take the right decisions in the way, in the very beginning itself, unlike others. Right from my teens till now, it's always quite interesting and intrig intriguing to look, at the pe to look at people who could foresee the future of our world, uh, especially in terms of socio-economic and uh, political situation. So my fundamental question was always, how only few could achieve the way they, what they had achieved? Why not others? That was my fundamental question. That has become a lifetime uh, pursuit for me uh, to think about future. It started with my future first, and then it extended to the future of my fellow human beings. And before I get into the main speech, I want to say, normally I think most of the people are from uh, Telugu speaking states. But the purpose of saying in English is because our brothers and sisters came from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and uh, neighboring countries. So I welcome you all. That's the reason why I'm making an attempt to say it in English. Because maybe politically we might be different, but from heart, we're all, we're all one. So it's always for me, the, few, the purpose is, okay, 
I take that away, that innovate and integrate and motivate. I don't know how much I can motivate. I'll share my experiences with you. I don't know how much I have achieved. I, what I had achieved really never audited it. So maybe I take your help in future to audit my success. And the fear of future and the fear of unknown what makes me care, what keeps me alive, and what made me to pursue. Let it be acting, let it be films, let it be politics. As an actor, it is my livelihood. Politics is for my country, it's for my nation. So as you are getting into it, Maybe a lot of people would ask me, like, you know, on what people might sometimes, you know, they have a different uh, opinion about me. I mean, I never told till now. What is my fundamental framework of functioning? They are like, you know, the physical and emotional, spiritual framework of mind. I never shared, with, shared it with anyone till today. Maybe first time, you compel me. You compel me to say this. And I'm glad that. I'm saying it today. So by the end of this session, I would be glad if I had lived up to the expectation which you are, uh, maybe which are expecting out of me, the kind of which I could reach up to your expectation. I hope I reach out. For me, to succeed in our life, in our line of profession, I had always I had a purpose, aim, and justification, and more important, and the means to achieve it. I have developed a very clear-cut system of rules and principles. For the goals I have kept, and the profession I have chosen, and the life I want to lead. It is based on ancient our scriptures to put a check and minimize or to an extent to cut down. It's, it is Kama Krodha Loba Moha Madamatsyate. For my Sri Lankan and Bangladeshi friends to make you understand, it is the lust, wrath, greed, infatuation, pride, and envy. I want to put a check on, minimize on those, because entire humanity, entire humans, lack of control on these things, the six core nature of our uh, our nature, so elements of our nature, this is where we had to put a check on it and to minimize it to succeed. And this is one. And second one is from Gandhiji, politics without principle, wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, and commerce without morality, science without humanity, and worship without sacrifice. This is what my fundamental framework, I based on this. So within the, with the, this kind of framework, I was thinking how much it is really possible to, based on this, to, to, to be based on this framework and to move forward and to succeed, or to make a livelihood. It's quite difficult for me. And I was searching for answers in my life. I was truly searching for answers. I don't know how to be succe uh, successful. I don't know what to achieve. I never had the regular edu education like you because I was bored uh, going to schools and colleges. I taught myself. And I went to school. The questions, what I had, the questions I had, my teachers couldn't answer. So I came out, I, one day I told my parents, I said, I'm not going to study anymore because I'm not interested in the regular school uh, curriculum. So I walked out and I pursued different kinds of uh, learning. Let it be music, let it be philosophy, uh, let it be logic and reasoning, let it be ethics. And I buried myself in books in search of answers, in search of to have a quality life, to have a better thinking, to be successful. But by the end of few years, by the age of 22, 23, I ended up as a, a completely lost out. I don't know what I was doing with my life. And I was dependent on my family for my pocket money to buy books. 
not for smoking or drugs or not, no, not for drinks. Uh, but still I didn't like it to be a dependent on my family members. So then it dawned on me, I should do something with, with my life. I have to make a, a livelihood. But whatever qualification I had, it's not very unconventional. So I don't know what to do. So finally, I was thinking, I was praying universe. I said, give me an opportunity. I don't know what to do with my life. So the reason is, why I'm saying it is, you're all prepared. You're all getting prepared, being prepared. You're under, under the preparation. Some of you had prepared, are venturing out into life. Now an opportunity knocks on your door. And that opportunity which knocks on your door might not be up to your liking might not be up to the expectation of yours. The same way for me also, the kind of opportunity I was looking for and what, I, what knocked on my door was two different things. And cinema knocked on my door. And I always I was a very scary guy. I never ventured out of my, ventured out of my room. Always I was in the learning process. I was scary, I was scared. Even to come out of my room, a few guests were there and I used to run away. And from, here, from there, it made me, life made me, compel me to face lakhs of people and be confident and to be what you want to be. <laughs> this all happened. This all happened. That one opportunity. And the opportunity which I wanted, it was not cinema, even if I wanted to do cinema. It is not of my choice. I didn't like my first first film. I didn't like that opportunity at all. My aspirations, my ambitions were sky high, but I had the opportunity somewhere here. I felt bad. But because of my consistent and constant learning, life made me to think, after everything, whatever you prepared for, whatever you trained for, but this is the only opportunity you got. Nothing in the vicinity you better grab it. Don't waste time. I grabbed that opportunity. <laughs> and to your surprise, it didn't do well. I was loved it. But I felt good because I did a good job within my limits. Not that I did an extraordinary job. I did within my best of my effort. I put my best of my effort. But I was not disappointed with the outcome of the film. It was not a successful cinema, but maybe a few people have must have recognized me. And I had one more opportunity knocked on my door. The producer was not a regular producer, and he's not into filmmaking. He was into Arab business, and no way connected with cinema, and he came. I was thinking all through my efforts, with all my philosophy, with my ideology, or with all my thought process, with all my learning, still I'm not, not able to attract the right opportunity. But still, I went and embraced it. It gave me a ray of hope. It became a little successful. So by then, I was getting, in the next three, four films, what my growth was like this, for my first film, by the end of the seventh film, it was like this, the graph. <laughs> so the key is, so that's what Mr. Sharma is saying, that's what he's saying, there's a meaning here. Especially to my uh, Bangladeshi and my Sri Lankan friends, I want to say, to make you understand, means girls mean different, I mean what they say and what they mean are two different. I'm sorry, this is not my opinion, please forgive me. This is what the lyricist uh, had written, that's what it means. So it's not my opinion. So, you, whatever opportunity you're going to get in future, imagine, don't undermine it. With all your best efforts, with all your a complete, you know, learning abilities and everything. If something knocked on, knocked on your door, and please make sure, be aware, grab that opportunity. Why? It's 
You are competing with 1.4 billion people on a day-to-day -day basis. No matter how small or insignificant the opportunity is, you are privileged and better than the majority. So grab that opportunity, make the most of it. Nothing is a dream job. There is no dream job at all. But let the job which comes into your hand make it to fulfill your dreams. That's what I would like to share first. In, the, in this process, you're bound to have a failure and success. As I, as I said earlier, you'll go through failures, you'll go through success. How do you handle failures and how do you handle success? When you had tremendous amount of failure in my life, what I felt was you're looking at a man who is with, filled with failures in his life, not with success. Because adversity reveals true character. The more adverse conditions you have, the more potentiality of yours will come out. So a failure in adverse conditions, it's always about how do you fight against it? How do you withstand the turbulence? How do you overpower them? How make sure you won't lose it? You lose to it, but you stand out. And that's what I would like to share this part of uh, my life. As I said earlier, I lost in cinema. I succeeded. For the next six, seven years, I never had success. Again, I had very existential questions. With all this success, what I'm going to do? A life which is completely lived for yourself is of no use, unless it is extended to others. This thought, this thought made me to be away from the very cinema which I loved. And I had failures, series of failures. And people who cheer up for me, who stand up for me, they were cursing me. What happened to your competitive spirit? What happened to your tenacity? What happened wow. to your uh, fighting spirit? I never lost my tenacity, I never lost my, lost my perseverance, I never lost my fighting spirit. But I was under the very existential uh, thought process. And then, finally, a, an opportunity came, and another film became a huge success. That's called Gavarsi. So what I mean to say is, you, you get failures. And then, once in a while I had success later, I had failures, it depends, it was going like this, in a, way, in a curvy way. And how do you behave when you get success? And then I would like to end up with failure. I had the highest success possible, but I never felt great about it. The reason is because to achieve something, even for me to address a, a kind of, uh, to keep, to come in front of this podium and address uh, as, uh, as uh, a session to uh, speaking, uh, a speech to you, you know how many uh, okay, tens of people has to work for it. A success comes onto a plate out of many Invisible hands, Even in many invisible hands. It's not just I was alone. Maybe we are at the pinnacle point. Maybe we are being thrusted upwards. But always I look at the people who are contributors for my success. That's why I never felt, I never had a, a great feeling about my success. But I'm grateful to the people who stood by me thick and thin. And acknowledging Acknowledgement is very important in success. Especially when you're in the, you're going to be the, you're going to be the financial wizards, you're going to be quite successful people. But understand, there are people who will, who would really contribute to your success. Please kindly acknowledge them. And success is transitory. The way failure is a transitory, success is also transitory. Please don't stick to success and don't feel, don't take, uh, too much into your head.
That's all I would like to share. When it comes to politics, I'm a, a failed politician, as I'm not. No, let, let us. No, acceptance. Acceptance. Okay. I'm not feeling bad about it. Let me tell you, I'm not feeling bad about it. Success, failure is halfway to success. I, I never feel low about my failures. I feel good about my failures because I have achieved something. Unlike many people who want to see a change in the society, they don't do anything. They sit in their comfortable chairs. They have opinions on every damn thing. They have everything to say. Right from cricket, right from day-to-day uh, -day events, everything, they have an opinion, but they won't do anything. For me, I'm doing something, and yet I fail. I feel good about it. I attempt it. So tomorrow, you try to achieve something in the process. If you fail, don't regret. It's just transitory. It's a passing phase. Never ever lose your spirit out of failure. That's what I would like to show. Now it is the lifestyle. We are in a generation of lifestyle diseases. And we are in a generation of instant gratification. Long back when I wanted to do something for society, I started an organization called Before I into I Came Into Politics. I started a thing called Common Men Protection Force, which was a, a preliminary exercise for a political party. And I met a lot of youngsters from different engineering colleges and all. The reason why I'm saying instant gratification is people want success immediately. They want change immediately. It won't happen like that. You have to work towards it. So they got dissolution. They got disillusioned, disappointed within 10 days. They're looking for a change because they came. In one session, you can't change. It takes a minimum decade to feel a dent, to put a dent to, uh, to, for anything. This is not going to be easy. So this is the lifestyle and, uh, and the reason why I was looking for why these kids are, why they are not at all motivated. Why their enthusiasm is like this and going down like, immediately? I feel they haven't living the life completely. They need everything immediately, like instant coffee, instant food, like Maggi noodles, like an instant uh, you know, Nescafe. You know, it's, it doesn't have, life doesn't happen that way. You have to really work hard towards it. Today, my mission is my mission to make sure to empower youth of this nation. Instead of sitting, cursing our political system, instead of sitting and cursing our political system, let us do something about it. This is, I made this as my mission, my life statement. Yeah. And for that, it is not just words. For me as a kid, you need you want to have a strong mind, you have to have a very strong body. Not in terms of muscularity, not in terms of uh, ripped uh, eight pack, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about very uh, disease free body. Not a body of sloth, not a body of lethargy, but not, not a body of dullness, but body of instant energy, immense energy. This is what my father taught me, which I would like to share, which all of, most of you must be knowing. Yenapa kandaralu, ukku naralu, vajra sankalpa unna yuvata ee desa ni kawal. Ito unta varu vandha mandi unta chalu, ee desa dasa disa marche. Ito is Swami Vivekan no chakna kawal. So you, instead of as most of you, going to be in four walls, hardly you'll get exposed to sunlight. Just once in a while, you come out, make it a regular regimen to go out every day, to have some sports, to do some yoga, to do some, I advise you to do some martial arts. And I really, I mean, one of the recent times I was watching a lot of Sri Lankan uh, videos, 
And please tell my Sri Lankan friends, I'm telling you, please. I really admire uh, one of your uh, martial artists, I forgot his name, but his group, they're excellent in defense, I mean, defending, I mean, uh, self-defense practices. They're really, really good. And I want that kind of youth. Just because you are into accounting job, never ever people underestimate you. Never ever. You should be capable of defending yourself. You get into martial arts not to hit people. No, it's not, 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 about, not about hitting people. It is about to have confidence in yourself. When you're really strong for personality, you don't like to hit people. Only the weaklings only hit. That's why I try to, to be a very strong uh, mindset, develop a very strong body. Apart from that, be in control of your emotions. Even if you want to unleash a war, even if you want to do something, fight against the system, better your emotions be under your control. Mere IQ, is, I know that all of you have greatest level of IQ. You also focus on EQ. Your emotions should be under your control. Don't let your emotions be dictated by others. Even if I'm saying something, I want you to very carefully analyze what I'm saying. Does he mean it? Does he leave word, whatever, each and everything he says? Whatever good I'm saying, take it or just leave it. I want you to be that practical even when it comes to the people whom you love and adore. So, for me, heroes are something, not from cinema. For me, the heroes are Swami Vivekananda. For me, the heroes are Netaji. For me, the heroes are Azam, Bhagat Singh. And the unsung heroes, the real heroes of this nation, are not the ones who are known. The heroes who are very rarely we get to know them. Very small fragment of society only knows them. For example, there's a, uh, an individual called, uh, uh, a senior citizen called Vanajivi Ramaya. All through his life, he was a small time laborer. He never had, uh, apart from his uh, physical labor, he never had anything to uh, make a living out of, like he used to do his, uh, he does hard labor. And take a bunch of saplings, Young, plant, uh, young saplings, tied under his uh, cycle. He used to keep on planting them all through the uh, parts of Kamma. For decades together, he planted lakhs and lakhs and lakhs of trees. And he never sought recognition. He never sought recognition for what he did. And finally, I'm glad that the uh, government gave him, central government gave him uh, Padma Shri Award in recent times. I'm glad for that. <coughs> Look forward. Look forward for the heroes within your vicinity. They are very, hardly they are known. Hardly they are known. Recently, in my, one of my political party meetings, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I'm not able to get the, his name. There were some kind of floods in one of the Rilesima areas, Anamaya Dam. The floods were happening, and it is able to immerse the uh, villages. And not even government was not reacting, but this one individual who was a very small time employee in the irrigation department, he saved 300 lives just telling them, please run away. What is like, it's good, you, the villagers are going to get drowned. <laughs> Can you imagine? He will never, will never get to know that kind of people. Always your mothers and the real heroes in our family, in our, they're within our vicinity, even within your family. Our parents, who really do us great, great amount of hard work to get us educated, to provide us food, to provide us shelter, we don't know their sacrifices they made for us. Acknowledge your parents. They are really heroes for us. Please, please kindly acknowledge your parents. I know that you know acknowledging, but never undermine just because most of the time we take people of our near and dear for granted. But they does a lot of hard work to make, full, to, to make us to fulfill our dreams. So I prefer heroes in real life. That's what I prefer. So always look for real heroes around you. 
and kindly acknowledge them, take inspiration from them. You have a choice, the final conclusion statement. You have a choice. You want to make a, a life of an impact. I mean, you want to make an impactful life or you want to make an income-oriented life. The choice is yours. I prefer to live a life of impact, an impactful life, not an income-oriented life. That's why I never did. I made a very conscious call because of my set of rules and uh, um, uh, my moral framework. I had a great opportunity to do uh, ads, which I could have earned a lot of uh, money, a lot of clothes. Maybe I would have bought this building when I, had, when I was to do it. By then it was cheap then. But I never made it. The reason was I never wanted to run behind money. For me, I want to leave an impact on the generation, and I want to be grateful to the generation who had sacrificed. That's the reason I want to uh, alive, live a life of impact than a life on, uh, based on income. And we have a choice of, you want to be a man of success or are you a man of value? I prefer to be both. You can have values, at the same time you can have success. Don't go for shortcuts in life. I never made shortcuts. I never made shortcuts. And the future is going to be yours. My final words are this. Is in, I read in one of your, uh, uh, your CEO journals only. A person can't be perfect Maximum he can be a chartered accountant. So you're close to perfection. So wishing you very, very best for your future. Tilulu Chapala. Okay, I have to take excuse from my friends from Bangladesh and uh, Sri Lanka. And also people, I think I heard that uh, a lot of uh, for people from different states uh, came all gathered up here. So now I'll, say, I'll conclude my remarks in Telugu. My conclusion. <laughs> Chartered accountant and all closest of perfection. Miru Sadin Sakapoti in Kavar Sadistan. Miru Kakapote in Kavar Desan Sadin Sakam, in Kavar Success Sadin Sakam. Then Korukuna, the Mandanichi Okate, Mandanichi Korukuna Dokate. Millennials, millennials, maybe you are under Nadil's, most of you are must be millennials and Kuntana. Most of them are millennials, I think. 2000, they are Most of it, huh? okay. We will undermine Jasta, we will underestimate Jasta. You prove them they are wrong. And then you can hear the Epton. Why so chased on the Matrana, Telazutu on the Matrana? Grana on the Nka. Even, by the age of 10, by the age of 10, a genius. It's all innovative. It's all innovation, it's all innovative, it's all creative abilities. It's all system. It's all system. forced education pattern. You break the rules. First, learn the rules, break the rules. You analyze them. 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 You them. You be your own role model. Just because someone is successful, someone has got a chalamandi padda perundani kani, ledante, this prapanchamanta wala visoyapto in a perunan tamatra nolgopolaipar. 
విలువలు ఉండాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు పేరున్నంత మాత్రాన విలువలు ఉండాల్సిన అవసరం లేదు డబ్బున్నంత మాత్రాన విలువలు ఉంటాయని మీరు నమ్మ అనుకోకండి డబ్బులు ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరూ గొప్పవాళ్ళు పేరున్న వాళ్ళందరూ మహానుభావులు అనుకోకండి నిజమైన మహానుభావులు బయటకు రారా అందుకే మీకు నేను చెప్పదలుచుకుంది మీరు ప్రతి ఒక్కరిని గుడ్డిగా నమ్మద్దు ఎవరినైనా సరే యుర్ థింకింగ్ మైండ్స్ మీ లాజికల్ మైండ్స్ మైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ రేషనాలిటీ మీరు ఏది తప్పు ఏది ఒప్పు మీకు నిర్ణయించుకునే శక్తి మీ దగ్గర ఉంది గుడ్డిగా ఎవరిని నమ్మకండి గుడ్డిగా ఫాలో అవ్వకండి ఎవరిని మీరు ఆలోచించండి నిజంగా మీకు నాలాంటి వాడిని కూడా మీరు ఏం చేయాలి ఇతను ఎంతవరకు సరిగ్గా ఉన్నాడు ఎంతవరకు సరిగ్గా ఉన్నాడు ఎంతో కావాలి తీసుకొని మిగతా వదిలేసి గుడ్డిగా 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 ఎవరిని నమ్మ ఇన్క్లూడింగ్ గాడ్ అలాగే మీ సక్సెస్ మన పర్సనల్ సక్సెస్సే దేశానికి పెట్టుబడి మన పర్సనల్ సక్సెస్ మన మీరు అందరూ ఏమనుకుంటారు నా పర్సనల్ సక్సెస్ స్వార్థం అనుకో స్వార్థం కాదు అది ఇమాజిన్ యూ బికమ్ అ గ్రేటెస్ట్ మీరు రేపు పొద్దున్న మీకు ఫైనాన్షియల్ రిజర్ట్స్ అవుతారు యూ మైట్ బి వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఆఫ్ యూ మైట్ గో టు వాల్ స్ట్రీట్ మేబీ యూ వన్ ఆఫ్ యూ బికమ్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ ఎనాలిస్ట్ మీరు ఏదైనా సరే యువర్ ఎంటైర్ సక్సెస్ ఈజ్ కాంట్రిబ్యూటింగ్ ఫర్ దిస్ నేషన్ ఈ దేశానికి ఉపయోగపడుతుంది అందుకని మీరు మీ పర్సనల్ సక్సెస్ సో లెట్ మీ సే అది నాకు ఏదో తెలుగులో చెప్పడం వచ్చిన సడన్గా ఆ ప్రిపరేషన్ లేని నేను లెట్ మీ సే దిస్ ఇన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఓకే ఆల్ యువర్ పర్సనల్ సక్సెస్ మే కాంట్రిబ్యూట్ ఇన్ మేకింగ్ అవర్ మదర్ ల్యాండ్ భారత్ ఎ స్ట్రాంగర్ సెల్ఫ్ రిలయంట్ అండ్ అ రైటియస్ నేషన్ ఇఫ్ నాట్ యూ హూ ఎల్స్ జాయింట్